The second component of the circulatory system that we want to cover today is the blood. So one of my favorite questions to ask my students uh, is, is, what is blood? Okay. And most of the time, the answers that I'll get from my students will be, well, blood is this liquid which is red in color, and when you bleed, it comes out from your body, and if you bleed too much, you die. Answers like that. It is this liquid-like substance that is traveling inside your body within the blood vessels. So, for example, if I were to accidentally or deliberately poke myself, I don't know what you're into, um, blood you will start bleeding hopefully not for a, not for a long time the bleeding will stop due to blood clotting um, and this reddish liquid comes out from your body and this liquid is known as blood but the question is what exactly does the blood contain what is it made out of if we were to examine blood under microscope we will notice this weird looking array of um, substances or cells which are floating around in a liquid. Now, the liquid is not supposed to be yellowish. I'm putting it as a yellowish liquid so we can see it quite clearly. Um, but it's actually quite faint. Okay, And this entire thing is just known as blood when you're looking at it under the light microscope. So, blood is divided into two things. The first thing that we can see are the blood cells. And the blood cells are are separated into red blood cells, which are red in color, white blood cells, and also platelets. Now, the white blood cells, there are a few types of white blood cells, but we will not go into its detail for this chapter. I will focus on white blood cells in chapter 11. And we do not need to know anything about platelets because they are just fragments of cells and the function of platelets are for blood clotting, but they are not so important for Cambridge A levels. So the main focus for this chapter is going to be red blood cells, which I'll talk about in the next video. Now, the blood cells are actually floating around in this faint yellowish liquid. Now, what is this faint yellowish liquid called? This is the liquid part of the blood referred to as plasma. And the color of plasma, as I've just said, is a pale yellowish color, and it's mostly just made out of water and dissolved substances. And the dissolved substances may consist of nutrients such as glucose, amino acids, vitamins. It may contain waste such as uh, urea, carbon dioxide, and it may have hormones um, dissolved within it such as insulin, glucagon, and such. Now, plasma is mostly made out of water. It is important that blood contains a lot of water because it gives blood a high specific heat capacity. If you go back to chapter two, when we talked about water, a high specific heat capacity basically means that water does not increase or decrease its temperature very easily. This provides a suitable and stable environment within our body to maintain a constant temperature. And water is also a universal solvent because it is a dipole and a lot of polar substances can dissolve within water, such as glucose, amino acids, hem um, glucose, hemo uh, uh, glucose, amino acids, antibodies, plasma proteins, so that when they dissolve inside the water, they can be easily transported within the blood. If you need a bit of revision for the two concepts of universal solvent and high specific heat capacity, I would like you to go back to chapter two to do a brief revision on that. So blood, which is this liquid in our blood vessel, is actually split into two things, plasma and blood cells. And under the blood cells in the next video, we are going to be looking at the red blood cells.